is an introduction to exercise 2e on equations with brackets and pronumerals on both sides, page 101 of your textbook. We're looking at this do now question from exercise 2d, a bit of particularly tricky one. It's tricky because there are multiple, multiple things you need to get rid of, right? But the question is in what order do we get rid of them? Remember the way that I said it last lesson was imagine if I gave you a number to substitute for x, what would you do first? Well, you'd multiply and then you'd add and then you'd divide by 5. We're going to do the opposite. We're backtracking, remember? So right now it's a divide by 5. To do the opposite and get rid of it, I'm going to multiply by 5. And again, this step here that I'm writing in blue, you don't have to write it. Assessment situation, you don't have to write it. There's something that can help you and me as well. So then that cancels out. So I end up with 4x plus 2 equals to 15. Of course, the next thing I see is that that plus 2 is annoying. So to get rid of the plus 2, I'm going to minus 2 on both sides. So we end up with minus 2, minus 2. These two cancel out. And I end up with, I'm going to write over here because I've run out of space, 4x equals to 15 minus 12, so 50 minus 2, sorry, which gives us 13. And finally, because I've got that 4x equals to 13, 4x means 4 times x, I'm going to divide both sides by 4. They cancel out, and I end up with x, 13 over 4, you're welcome to put that in the calculator. 3.25, or you can also just leave it as 13 over 4 as well. That's fine. I should write or 3.25. Thank you very much, Daniel. Any questions about that one? Okay. So that's solving equations. Today we're focusing on solving equations that have both brackets and pronumerals on both sides, which can get a little bit confusing, but it's the same thing with an extra step. So can I get you to write down this text here, again, in your shorter form if possible? So instead of writing, for example, equations with brackets can be solved by first expand the brackets, you can just write first expand brackets. So write down these two dot points here in your own words, thank you. Preferably in much shorter terms. So equations with brackets, we can easily solve them, we just need to take them out of the brackets. And to do that, we do stuff that we did in exercise 2c which is just expanding our brackets. If an equation has pronumerals on both sides, we collect to one side by adding, subtracting, or whatever it is, to the terms. Right? That just makes it easy for us to move around. Now, on paper, it sounds really, dif really difficult, but when we give it a shot, it's pretty straightforward. It's the exact same thing we've done beforehand anyway. I'll give you 30 seconds to copy that down. The, the two dot points, these two right here, you're going to write down in your short form. It's a very awkward silent pause for anyone watching the recording. Sorry? It's really annoying from my end to do it, so I'm just going to keep it in. Good question, though. All right, let's move on. So, again, expand brackets first and then work with whatever we've got at the end of it. Let's focus on question. We're not going to go through A, B, C, D. I'm going to go through A, B, and C. I'll go through A, C, D. Let's focus on question A. It says 3 times 2x minus 1 equals 4. What's the rule when it comes to brackets again? Expanding brackets, do I just multiply these two? Multiply everything, you expand it out properly, good. So it's 3 times 2x, which is 6x. Then I have 3 times negative 1, not forgetting the negative, which gives me minus 3 equals to 4. And then it's the exact same thing as before. Obviously, the minus 3 is annoying, so I'm going to plus 3 on both sides. These two cancel out, and I end up with 6x equals to 7. Dividing both sides by 6. I'm going to skip the step of writing divided by 6 and just write x equals to 7 over 6. Any questions? Hayden, any questions? 
Does that seem okay, doable for us so far? Great. Let's move on to question C. We're getting a little bit trickier. Question C, it says we've got 7x minus 1 equals to 5x minus 7. The tricky part here is that the x is on both sides. I'm going to rewrite the question here. You don't need to rewrite the question twice, of course. Just once will do. Okay. Now, if I was to ignore the fact that there was a x and just focus on the fact that there's a 7 and a 5, I would just subtract 5 or subtract 7. So I'm going to do this very similar idea. I'm going to subtract, let's say I'm going to subtract 5x, and I'm just doing that to get rid of one of them. I'm going to subtract 5x on this side, and also do it to this side. What is 7x minus 5x? 2x, thank you very much, 2x. And I've still got the minus 1, I'm going to leave that there for now, I have not done anything to it. Which equals, and remember because we subtracted 5x, these two cancel out, don't they? Yeah? So I'm left with negative 7. Then we do the same thing, except this time, I want to get rid of the negative 1. So to get rid of the negative 1, I'm going to plus 1 on both sides. And we end up with... <coughs> Apologies. 2x minus 1 plus 1, of course those two cancel out. Negative 7 plus 1, what does that get me? Negative 6, thank you very much. And finally, of course, because divided by 2 on both sides, x equals to negative 6 on 2. Why is that not my final answer? Can you thank you very much, because I can simplify it. 6 divided by 2 is 3, so negative 6 over 2 would just be negative 3. Done. Great. Any questions about that one? Because if you have any questions, that will be a great time to ask before we move on to the trickier one. Okay. Last question, and then I'll let you get started. Question D has brackets and pronumerals on both sides. So it's 4 bracket 2x minus 3 equals to 5 bracket x plus 6. What was the first thing we do? Expand. Thank you very much. Expand. 4 times 2x, 8x. And remember, then we have to multiply the other thing as well. In this case, 4 times negative 3, max. Thank you. 4 times negative 3. Remember the negative. That brings it to negative 12, which equals, and then 5 times x, 5x. 5 times positive 6 is positive 30. I really hope you're writing this down as I go along. Thank you very much to those of you that are. Great. And then, 8x, 5x, it's annoying to have x on both sides. Let's cancel it out. I'm going to subtract 5x on both sides. If I wanted to, I could subtract 8x on both sides instead. But then I end up with a negative 3, and that's annoying. So that's just personal preference. Of course, these two cancel out. And I end up with 8x minus 5x, which is... 8x minus 5x. There, x, thank you very much. 3x. Remember, I haven't done anything to the negative 12, so I'm going to leave that there. Those 5x's are cancelled out. And we're left with positive 30. I'm going to then consider the negative 12 right there and do the opposite. So we end up with plus 12 on both sides. And we get 3x equals to 42. And of course, as we already know, to do the opposite of times 3, we divide it by 3, it becomes 42 over 3. That's a trickier one. Are we done? Why not? Good. 42 is divisible by 3. It doesn't look like it, but it is. The way I think of it is, I know that 3 times 10 is 30. That would leave a remainder of 12, which I know fits in 4 times. So, 14. And that will be our final answer.
Okay.